everywhere else, I am painting it like I'm this. Uh -oh. Well, we are all changing our names here on Encounter Roleplay, but one thing is certain as we cross the void and delve into a new game. This is Wednesday. This is Cult Divinity Lost. And we are I Am Pilgrim. That seemed dramatic. I, I felt good about that intro. Why don't we go around and say hello to our cast? Wonderful cast, and let's begin with the man above me, Colin Nomicon. How are you doing, friend? Hello! Hey, pretty good. Ready to have the living shit scared on me. Um, super into it. I am uh, doing well. Hi, everybody. Colin, Colin Nomicon on Twitter and Discord and all the other places. Tw Twitch, too. Twitch, too. Um, and yeah, quite, quite pleased to be here and um, very, very into uh, whatever horrible thing Mitch is stewing up for us today. And what a brew it will be. Oh dear lord, I was not ready. <laughs> it's oh, beginning. Okay. The great beginning. Too soon. It, it, it doesn't count as a jump scare if it comes in slowly. <laughs> Something that is not too soon is the introduction of the wonderful Cadence joining us oh. for the first time here on Encounter Roleplay. If anything, Whoa. overdue. Overdue. <laughs> Hello, hello. I don't know what to say because I am, my nerves are like right up here. But hey, it's great to be here. I can't wait to see what horrible things Mitch does to us. And yeah. <laughs> Rindis, do you think this horrible reputation Mitch has is deserved? Are you excited <laughs> to be here tonight? I'm excited. I think it's completely unfounded, but I'm ready for him to prove it wrong. Mitch, are you ready? Are you I hope so. Like, everyone keeps anticipating this campaign uh, to, to be super terrible but like and, and terrifying, but I, I think this is really just like a comedy centered around Molly O'Brien. Uh, but yeah, I, I am very much excited. <laughs> Molly um, O'Brien, so actual assassin. <laughs> oh, yeah. The horror has already happened. It is within us. It's without us. It kind of consumes us. It follows us while we sleep. Uh, and that terror and horror, of course, is Molly O'Brien. The more that we learn about her and her past, she planted the more a serial we... killer in our ranks. Yeah, it's really uh, you know a kind of roleplay who did the casting, and I'm just kind of letting <laughs> it happen as she tells me to shush. Um... <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I recruited for a cult, but I might have recruited for a cult. And I think this is a good time for me to say thank you to Helmgast for sponsoring tonight's show, for gifting us Mitch and the wonderful universe that is Cult Divinity Lost 4th Edition. Please do go and check out Helmgast's wonderful work and the beautiful book that they have put together for this game. The art is insane, it's edgy, and so it's pretty. beautiful. Uh, I'd also like to mention Mage Hand Press, who sponsored tonight's earlier show, Dark Matter. They have a killer Kickstarter going on right now. They're working towards something like $150,000. It's an incredible sci-fi 5e conversion, well worth checking out. And finally, where can you buy Cult? Well, Modiphius deal in a lot of great TTRPGs, including Cult, and their very own Star Trek adventures, which you can check out tomorrow from 6 till 9. As Sword, Sword, yes, Sword of Kalis is unleashing a Klingon venture using the new source book by Modiphius. It's just all going. I have so many TTRPGs, and if you want to keep up with them, we have World Anvil for you, which is perfect for forging your adventure, whether you're a writer, player, GM, or you simply just like making notes about worlds. Go and check that out and start forging today. That is all of the wonderful ad spiel I have to give you. Here is present Charlie. I am beyond hyped to get into tonight's adventure. I'd like to remind you this is a horror show and you can take a break at any time. Our players will all be doing the same as necessary, but mostly I think we have buckled up and we are ready to depart for Japan. Check out down below for your donation options for tonight. Hit that retweet button if you haven't already. And Mitch, why don't we begin? Excellent. Um... So within the dark trails and winding roads of Tokyo, um, a town that's been on the map for 
quite a long time in history, a place of historical significance, um, the place where a lot of events have occurred, good, bad, horrific, uh, benevolent, malevolent. Um, here, with your current phones, um, the phone signal is sparse. Um, and it kind of brings you back to a time when there was little connection, despite the urban feel of Tokyo, the astounding amount of individuals, the people walking back and forth, staring at you, um, you being the tourists in this place. Um, it's a place that you can get lost in. The streets, the sounds, the lights. Even at night, there is a sort of warmth and glow to it that begs you to drift down its little alleyways and discover what possible adventures you could go on down there. It's enticing. It's sweet. It tastes good. As you head on over to the book and read over in Tokyo, the trees blur and the night sky uh, takes over this pale sense, uh, maybe even a little bit of anxiety uh, sweeps in just right under the eyes, that little twitch uh, that occurs, um, the little scratch, the itching starts as you're in the back of the cab, heading on over to the hostel that you have booked months in advance. And as you are looking out, this place is a little bit away from it all. The lights ha no longer reach out, uh, clawing against the backdrop of the city streets. Um, there's darkness, sweet, quiet darkness, that sort of silence that captures the imagination, woos the poets and the romantics, uh, and sends your thoughts down wonderful and fantastical roads. The vehicle slows down, and as you get out, you notice that there's a large wooden tree of some sort, uh, maybe oak, imported in years ago, laid spilled out against this nice dirt road that leads up to this hostel. Um, it's a nice quaint place, you know, this beautiful hostel just beyond the road, beyond the bamboo forest. And oozing out from it is just swelling of ants. Their red backs bright against the dark and skeleton-like tree they surge from. Just next to it, you notice a small rabbit twitch, its head twisted and contorted in such a way that you understand it to be dead. And yet, it keeps moving. You can see the ants crawling about it, giving little regards to its movement or the blood that runs from its neck, oozing down the tree and onto the grass. Tiny little red demons. They were efficient cold and calculating. The beams of the lights of the street um, illuminate the slight trail going up to the hostel, and you can see the lights of the windows. It's easy to see that they were trying to capture that old country Japanese look with the sliding doors. And one by one, you move forward down the path to meet up with the rest of your fellow companions at the end of this long, arduous journey. And so with that, we will be introduced to each of our characters. Uh, and I think we will start uh, with Domho. So Domho uh, usually goes by Dom. Seeing uh, this uh, kind of horrific scene of this bleeding out rabbit and swarms of ants um, is pretty stoic about it. Kind of doesn't pay it very much mind. Uh, say la vie. He uh, is a he's, he's a gentleman in his mid-30s who's 
normally a lot more clean cut, but has let his hair and his beard grow long in the last uh, in the last short while, last few months. Um, he pretty much dresses in all black. He has a pretty standard aesthetic. He really doesn't deviate from for anything. He's, his wardrobe has been uh, black as the night since he was a teenager, and he really hasn't changed at all. And uh, the only flash of color anywhere on this guy is that he likes to wear his purple tinted sunglasses. He was an old Black Sabbath fan and always wanted to copy that Ozzy Osbourne look. And uh, he's been emulating it since he was a kid. But as he sees this now, sees this somewhat horrific sight, um, he sort of looks down at it and, you know, that's that's a bit gross, but uh, let's, uh, you know, just, he doesn't really seem to mind getting out and walking. That's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. So, uh, just stoically looks back toward, uh, toward his friends and nods and starts heading on without really saying a word. And I would like to take a moment to thank Cleric of Cord for their donation. One Bane, one Boon for Ooh. Colin. Love Colin. Uh, so a Thanks, Bane Kat. means mit, you get begins. to make things more challenging. And a Boon means you get to help. So at some point during tonight's show, Mitch is going to throw Colin a bone and then hit him with it, I think, is how <laughs> this is going to play out. Cheers. Uh, but thank you so much, Kat, for that donation. All right. Um, let's have Rindus go for next. All right. Um, Rindus would step out next, um, watching Dom react to the dead rabbit. Uh, her own expression kind of sours a bit. Uh, you see very pale, very tired looking uh, redhead dressed uh, in a leather coat to, to accompany the autumn weather. Uh, but she quickly fishes out a camera and says, well, that's morbid, isn't it? And starts to like film and zoom into it and probably starts narrating something to herself. And it's just like, oh, it's definitely an ominous sign of the way things are going to begin, if we're already seeing signs of death at uh, the start of our journey, but hopefully, with like all things, uh, death marks renewal, and she cuts it off, and she's like, mm, "Might need to change that in post," and puts the camera away and looks at Dom, and it's like, "What? What do you think?" I think you're honestly wasting our time right now with this, Rindus. Maybe we could just get going it's mm. it's not it's it's nothing i mean you, you'll find better material here this is nothing that's fair uh, be rolled then i suppose uh, all right and she yeah. puts the camera away and heads with the others excellent molly let's hear from you it's molly she dresses like this a little strangely for a woman of her age, but hey, you gotta have fun sometimes. Uh, she just looks at that rabbit and the ants and just gives a shiver and looks at Rindus askance. Oh, this, this is the way things are starting. I, this is going to be a quite interesting trip, isn't it? And she continues up the path after Dom. Muted Finally, uh, yeah, Johansson. So Fia is dragging a small wheelie suitcase, and I think one of the wheels is slightly wonky, so it has a juddering sound, and it's slightly obnoxious as it echoes around behind her. And every time she needs to lift it up and down the curve, there's a curt tut under her breath. What are we all looking at exactly? She pauses to see what Rindis and Dominal we're maybe looking at as we approach our destination. 
another curt tut as she sees the rabbit. Nothing. We're looking at nothing, Sophia. I thought Japan was supposed to be clean. Turns out animals die everywhere. Don't know what to tell you. Uh, Japanese are a superstitious lot, though. If you wanted to look into it, it might be a foreboding sign, but it might just be nothing. I mean, the ants will take care of it. The ants are like nature's cleaner, after all. Fascinating. And she's going to just barge straight through and past her obnoxious little wheelie case following through. It's one of those hard shells ones, so it'll probably hit you slightly in the in the legs as she passes. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks. You, you don't think she's still upset about the... Uh, well, you know. Mm. No. Just awkward smile. It's ancient history. I uh, doubt it. I mean, if so, that's that's on her. Well, all right. Let's keep going, and she'll hoist the shoulder bag. Uh, Molly, are you coming? Oh, yes. Yeah, as you guys surge forward uh, down the pathway, these little... Uh, stone steps uh, in between the dirt. Uh, you see little ants crawling in between each one of them. Uh, the bamboo uh, forest, as it were, kind of claustrophobic on either side. Uh, but it opens up uh, right before you to this lovely two-story um, house. It's kind of reminiscent of an old-style Japanese house. The sliding doors, the little lights uh, you see moving right behind the screens. It's calming right underneath the night sky, it's many twinkling lights gazing down at you. It's not so bad. And rabbit's a bad start, but this is, this is nice. And we could almost get used to a place like this. Mm. Can't really blame the people for the rabbit. They didn't kill it. But it's clean. It, hopefully it's more comfortable inside. Yeah. yeah. And as you move forward, uh, you immediately see a shadow, long and tall, uh, growing steadily towards the door. And as it slides open, you notice a very pale woman, maybe about the age of 30, hard to say. Uh, her eyes looking at you, a slight smile on her face, um, wearing a old dusted kimono with many of its blues and whites faded uh, with some stains. She smiles, greetings. You must be the ones we're waiting for, um, the four, the, the five. Um, my name's Samantha. Uh, please come in. And she shifts the sliding door open a little bit more, revealing a nice little bar with several wooden chairs set up against it. There is currently no bartender uh, seated before it, nor anyone in attendance at the moment. Uh, it's silent, uh, almost gray-like, with the dark lights uh, casting long shadows within the place. I am afraid we will only be four. Yeah. Why... Why is that? Uh, I have to remind you that there's no refunds. That won't yeah, be necessary. Well, our fifth our one could make it. Joining us. Well, as long as someone pays, I don't really care. Uh, come in. Uh, we have a little bit of leftover soup. It's slightly cold at the moment. Many of the other patrons have decided to go to bed early. Which leads you to enjoy our living room as well as bar area at your leisure and with the privacy that you might desire. Uh, Come in. Please. Yeah, can we just can we just help ourselves at the bar or what? Well, it will be added to your room. Um, ah. 
every sip and every drop, of course. Uh, it's quite expensive to have such a place here in Tokyo and a lot of groundwork that needs to be done. But let me show you to your rooms first. Um, yeah. And then take care of payment and, of course, get you something warm in your, in your tummy. Please, follow me. She so grins Sophia? and... Sorry, guys. No, go ahead. I'm more interested in what you have to say. Sophia has already begun to unlace her street shoes and is looking around for a cubby to put them. Under her arm, she has a pair of kind of house slippers. She'd done her research on kind of the expectations in Japan. Um, watched a lot of YouTube and the like, and in her head, this is what you do in every place you come into. You take off your street shoes. And she brought nice house shoes and she wants to wear them. So she's there pulling the laces out of her, um, I think they're like limited edition Nikes or something. Just getting those <laughs> off. Meanwhile, Domino is cracking mud off of his Doc Martens through the uh, heading, following uh, her to his room. Molly would probably start taking off her shoes as well, seeing Sophia do it. Yeah, Rind Rindis instinctually had her shoes off and uh, would have quickly reached out and uh, caught Dom by the shoulder and been like, mm -mm, rude, don't, what? don't walk with your sh street shoes aren't allowed inside. Oh, it's a, it's a cultural thing. It's all right. Here. And uh, she takes out like a pair of uh, throwaway slippers and she's like, you can wear these. That's not... You know how much smaller your feet are than mine? That's not going to fit. I'll just wear socks. It's yeah. fine. Don't worry about it. And she'll just, just put the slippers on herself then. Yeah, and Dom, Dom you kind notice of kind of looking... Off, yeah. uh, looking back that there is a small little creature, uh, pale, much like uh, what you can almost assume to be her mother uh, on all fours, uh, kind of creeping forward with a towel... Um, soaking up the mud as you do to leave this trail. I I am so sorry. I didn't. It, can I, I can get that for you if you want? Please let me. I mean, Samantha next I, to you shakes her head. No, um, it's fine. Please come upstairs. We have your rooms ready. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So we had five rooms reserved um, and it sounds like one of you will be missing did you want any changes to the reservation in Japanese Sophia will answer and say our other friend is dead please stop bringing it up no need to change looks... unless you want to give someone else the room she'll say in English she looks at you and there's a pause, a slight twitch in her left eye. She smiles. Follow me then. Going up the stairs. Probably... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say Rindus probably has like a translation book out and she's just flipping, trying to find what was said. <laughs> and she's like, uh, oh, Chine uh, is. Then she leans over to Dom. Death, did she mention? Did she probably mention Dylan? I don't think that's good. That's not. What's the... Hold on, let me. That's... Uh. Wait a minute, when did you learn how to speak Japanese, Sophia? We were coming to Japan. I had to do something on the flight. You learned it in. On the... Wow. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. I've been doing it since we started planning. Oh, no, that makes oh, okay. more sense. That's not as crazy. Yeah. Impressive, though. Jeez. Do I, I want to know what you works. said? It doesn't matter. Let's get to our rooms. I want to get rid of this luggage. Yeah. All right. 
She moves on up the stairs, uh, and the first thing she introduces you to is a uh, little wooden beam uh, with a handle upon it. She pulls it up, and you notice that is one of those little uh, little elevators that you would kind of bring up food and the like. Um, she smiles and says, this is a very modern um, place, uh, and to be fair, my ankles are not what it's used to. Usually, if you order food or have something brought to you, I'll place it within this and it'll move on up and there'll be a slight ding. Um, she closes it and presses one of the buttons and you kind of hear this uh, kind of dangling of charms uh, on the other side of it, though the source of the noise you can't quite point to. That's its sound. So if you hear that throughout the night, don't be alarmed. It's normal. It's okay. Now, please follow me. She moves down a little bit to the hall and you notice several sliding doors to your left and to your right. The hallway goes further down than you could ever have believed looking from the outside of the building um, where she motions for five rooms that are kind of at the corner of it. Um, each one uh, with his doors open, and you can see inside that there's a tatami mat, a very small room. Um, it's really not that much with a, a slight window. And of course, the, uh, the best part is that the sleeping is kind of hidden away in a closet um, with a wooden handle. Uh, she moves forward and shows you how to work this. It's a wooden handle that you pull um, and just beyond it is uh, several uh, beddings, as well as a pillow, and you pull this down um, so that you can have privacy. Uh, we prefer if the doors, uh, sliding doors, remain open uh, just because of safety. Um, nonetheless, why don't each one of you get acquainted with a room? I will be downstairs. I'm not going to come upstairs again. Um, I don't go upstairs past a certain point in time uh, just because the darkness uh, lends itself to accidents. If I do need you, I'll send my daughter, who you've seen before. Otherwise, I expect to see you downstairs in about 10 minutes to settle your payment. And what is your daughter's name? In this line of business, I generally do not like divulging the names of family members. Not yet. Maybe when she's older, she will take this place over and this legacy becomes hers. But for the meantime, she is merely a stranger here. And you should treat her as such. A shadow moving in the backdrop. Nothing more. Very well. Okay. Sure. She bows and shuffles off. You hear the creaking of the wood beneath her as she leans against the wall as she goes downstairs, leaving you guys alone here by yourself. This is this is okay, I guess. Um, does anyone have a preference on a room? I don't really care. Take whatever you want. You all seem to look pretty similar. I don't. I don't think it matters too much. Um, uh, Sophia, uh, did you have a preference? I'll take that one, and she'll point kind of carelessly towards one of the the pod spaces. Apparently, she's a top bunk kind of gal. <laughs> hmm. You know, this is exactly the kind of place Dylan would have chosen. <laughs> Certainly cost yep. effective. And very was... cozy. Mm. Very, very cozy. Uh, he was always much... the thrifty one, wasn't he? <laughs> not much wiggle room, though. No. Depends what kind of wiggling you're doing, Rindis. <laughs> I mean, you. you... Already? 
We're starting this already? I didn't say anything. I'll take this one. She picks one the uh, like a ways from there to not make it more awkward. <laughs> I'll take this one then. And he and uh, Dom takes the room that's like between Sophia and Rindis, like gonna be buffer zone between the two of them. <laughs> um, and just tosses uh he has like a just basically a gym bag and just tosses it in. Alright, I'm set. Yeah. Yeah, I'll I'll tuck away uh, her, tuck away all the recording equipment and be like, uh, we're certain our stuff is safe here, right? We'll hear no. every creak on the stair, I'm sure. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Sophia slides the backpack from her shoulder and unzips it, and pulls out the small red urn which houses the fifth member of our party. And where shall I put Dylan? He still has a room, technically. <laughs> yeah. That would be poetic, wouldn't it? Put him in his own room. Uh, poetic I mean... is a really nice way of saying fucking weird. That's... that's <laughs> come on. I mean, some Asian cultures, they have whole rooms dedicated to uh, past ancestors, so it's not really that strange. Yeah, that's not really our culture, though, is it, Rindus? Or, no, but or, I mean, neither is taking him on a plane to another country, but it's fine. It's just a suggestion, really. We're paying for it. Do, do whatever you want. I don't did, care. Did, did anybody want to sleep with his ashes. Okay, now that's fucking weird. <laughs> I, it, I offered a solution that didn't have to make it weird for anybody, but if it Remind came me, Domino, to... why are you their roommate again? And Sophia is putting Dylan up on the empty bunk. Why do I live with Rindus? Is that what you're asking me? Yes. Uh. Well, she always pays the rent on time. That's been good. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. And Dom kind of looks to Rindus. It kind of smiles a little bit. Um, there's look, feels like Buffson. Feels like Buffson a little bit, but you know they're they're good friends. And you know I think at this point, Sophia, it's just force of habit. To be honest with you, my winning personality helps. Yeah, sure, that too. And Sophia turns sure. to Molly and says, not to mention all the conversations about skunk apes. <laughs> <laughs> I recall you liked the conversation about skunk apes, and she'll head downstairs. I've... Wait up, and Dom will follow after Rindus. <sighs> Shall we, son? So Sophia? <laughs> One more step towards the adventure, I suppose. Yeah. I'm Head starting to think this was a terrible idea. And as What's Molly and... You just had to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, on which note, I want to say thank you to the Chaos Chorus for all those retweets, because we have unlocked a Bane, which means Mitch gets to make it more challenging for us. And Mitch, I have a proposal. How about we unlock Nightmare Mode for the next 10 minutes? Oh my gosh, yes. And I actually Ooh. was going to move into a scene, which I think will, will very much be needed. Uh, Sophia yeah, and Molly, because... as you guys are up. Uh, and for those who don't know what Nightmare Mode is, uh, Cult of Gloss is normally used with 2D10. Uh, and Nightmare Mode is 2D6. Uh, you can give a little bit more love and do 2020 roll uh, for 2D4, uh, which, yeah, you understand it. Um, so Sophia and Molly, as you guys are, are kind of moving down the hallway uh, towards the stairs, um, you notice that one of the sliding doors had opened. Uh, and this is very much different than when you guys had first come up here. It had been closed before, but now you can clearly see uh, several little fireflies within it that give it a slight bit of illumination. 
on that same sort of bed uh, that you recall seeing in your own room, that handle that is brought down, you notice that there's a slight bit of shaking and almost a rumbling from it. And if you kind of turn your head a little bit, a little bit of scratching. And a distant scream of a child. Uh, yeah, wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> the line between fiction and reality blurs. <laughs> Sophia looks to Molly to see if she has also noticed the strange scrabbling sound, but her eyes are on those fireflies, slightly mesmerized as they're kind of moving around. Do you think that's a normal thing? I don't know. Maybe they have a cat that's stuck. Oh. I'll go. <laughs> she sees Molly's like sympathy face and is like, all right, let's go <laughs> check. It's not a cat that's stuck. <laughs> and yeah. we'll walk to the door. Pull it open the first a little step, further. Uh, calls up a faint sound of <laughs> You place your hand on the handle and you see it move up the tiniest bit and you see this hand kind of reach out underneath it, grabbing on to the exterior, and it slowly starts to lift up. Um, the shadows of it darkening in the room, lightless with only those little lightning bugs giving out any light. Uh, just all seems to be swallowed up into something. Even the noise doesn't really go that far. Are you pulling it up further, Sophia? Yes, and it's almost a hypnotic action of how much worse can this get? I'm gonna see. <laughs> yeah. You pull it up on the other side, pale, eyes wide, and with a smiling face, you see a man who says, Boo! Hey, hey guys, he swears I'm Fred. in four different languages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I see uh, you found my room. Uh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, you must be Taurus as well. Good to meet you. Uh, and this person, uh, probably about mid 30s, uh, with a creeping hairline and, and bright blue eyes, uh, the tucked in shirt with uh, short tanned uh, cargo shorts, uh, plops out of this little sleeping arrangement uh his sneakers hitting the soft tatami mats well <laughs> sorry i uh I, I did that a little bit of laugh you know um i was meaning to do it all day and i, I had been there for quite some time so uh i had to do something you know and he extends his hand <laughs> fred mm -hmm. molly pleased to meet you oh molly good to meet you and I uh you your and why would you why would you think that that's uh it's a very specific and um uh, i don't know my mom had lots of cats like 13 of them um she used to kind of sit out on the porch and the uh what was that uh, the, the chair that moves uh back and forth uh staring out on the lawn and her 13 cats as, as she would say would creep along her children um, but I don't think there's any cats here. Having met you, this news about your mother is not a surprise. In your name? Just think of me as a shadow. And she's gonna just walk That's away from this dude. Mellow. I don't Mellow know dramatic I there. Didn't jump out, really. She's tutting all the way. <laughs> 
She's muttering in Sorry. German, which is the language she goes to when she's really annoyed with someone and wants to make it clear. <laughs> it's Nothing been a long journey. quite like German. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, I totally get it. The, um, uh, the, the person right next to me on my flight here, uh, I had arrived like about a week ago, um, but they had been going rambling on and on about um, uh, air, air flight safety and uh, in peanuts and such. It was uh, both the most boring and most enticing conversation, one that I couldn't just sleep through, uh, but one I didn't want to be a part of anyway. Um, but Molly, it is uh, good to see you. You are a, uh, I think, uh, what do they say, a gorgeous individual. Um, your compatriot uh, is uh, probably a little bit low on the uh, charisma indicator, uh, as some of my friends might say. Um, but you seem uh, very friendly. Thank you, sir. Now, if you don't mind, I must join my companions. Oh yeah, of course. It was uh, just a just a playful joke. Uh, if you ever need me, just uh, do a little rat a tat tat on the the screen door there. Um, it is uh, you know I I can't sleep, <laughs> as it were. Um, please. Right. And Molly goes downstairs quite swiftly. <laughs> as um, yeah, as door, Sophia. Shut. As mm -hmm. Sophia comes downstairs to like join Rindus and I, um, like I'm gonna say, I, I mean, I think I know Sophia's pissed off face at this point. So, it's like, as she comes downstairs, like, what the hell happened to you? Have you been speaking German? Yeah. You didn't That's see you. You didn't see any house spirits, did you? You look disturbed. No, I saw an Irish Canadian jump out of a closet and tell me about his mother. That's just as <laughs> That's... bad, really. And very specific. Yes. Is that... I would rather huh. see the spirits, I think. I thought it was a cat. You mistook oh, an Irish Canadian no, for a cat? <laughs> Molly shows You're up. Right. <laughs> oh, hey, Mel. Is we got, you are you telling me we got them? Is there some fucking weirdo staying here or something? Oh, he's creepy. He's creepy, creepy, creepy. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> I would like to teach What's Molly the like? word for creepy in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone in the chat should definitely put the, the word for, for creepy in Japanese. Or in if you're, yeah, I want, I want creeper in chat. If you're, come on, help us out. <laughs> <laughs> What's this guy look Speaking like of... so I know to stay away from him? <laughs> there are there are a good number of uh, cat spirits. Uh, they call them yokai here. They're kind of like what I research, uh, but uh, they're much easier to appease. And uh, the people here tend to, tend to uh, believe that they're real. So maybe you did see a cat spirit and it was just playing a trick on you. Uh, Bake neko, they call them. That's uh, possible, probably. Maybe. Yeah. Who yeah, has sure. the, that's, that's what happened. Who has the foundation credit card? We need to pay for this thing. I do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh good. <laughs> oh, that's shit. Okay, yeah, because I did not remember to bring that. So thank you, Molly. Well, it depends on the this group. <laughs> you see Samantha coming out of the kitchen, a very large knife uh, in her hand uh, as she places it on the bar table and then moves over to this very slight little uh, credit card machine. Um, all right, uh, let's let's do payment. I, I kind of want to get myself and my daughter to sleep. Hand her the card. As far as the bar goes, is it just, uh, we'll start a tab and honor system of telling you what we've taken? Yeah, uh, there are cameras you. on the first floor, mm -hmm. so I do, uh, well, actually my husband monitors them, um, at extended length, uh, so I wouldn't think about taking more than you have the ability to pay. The cameras... Those are everywhere, or just the bar? Just the first floor. 
I assure you, okay. you have the utmost privacy within your rooms as well as the restrooms. The restrooms, of course, if you come down here and go out the back, there is a small little building out in the garden. Uh, feel free to use those. Um, toilet paper is usually uh, just behind the bar. Okay. The this will be in. It's an outhouse? Oh. Is that what we're saying? It's a sort of outhouse. Yes, I think that would be probably the, the closest translation, an outhouse. Mitch, I'm the mention my distress of... level to two, just for the record. Distress is going up to two. <laughs> because of the outhouse? <laughs> at at, at, at the mention... People live like this. <laughs> yeah, written out, like, this. this whole session is, like, this much hotel in like this much outhouse <laughs> at, at the mention of no cameras in the upstairs or the outhouse uh, specifically the bathrooms Rindis leans into Dom and just goes that's a really big problem out here like she's very carefully whispering it but probably obvious that they're whispering she's like it's a real big problem lots of uh, perverts who like to film people in the bathrooms so we should probably still check And then, like, Dom realizing that they're pretty obviously whispering is like, no, I heard you, but just they're... <laughs> trying to look nice. <laughs> uh, in any case, uh, Molly O'Brien, uh, here is your credit card. Here's your receipt as she hands them over. You also have a package. Um, I can bring it out to you um, if you would like right now, or I can leave it in your rooms. It's really up to you. Sure you ordered something, Molly? No. I couldn't imagine what it is. That's weird. <laughs> I didn't. Did someone order something on the foundation card or something? Sophia, did you? It's probably from Dylan. You know how he likes treasure hunts. Look, He's I don't probably... care candy or it's, something it's getting late and i would like to go to my room with my husband and my daughter and enjoy an evening alone without talking to any more guests i so. understand that sounds delightful <laughs> sophia will take whatever it is <laughs> and kind of start scooching party to a side Excellent. we will see you in the morning Yes, you will. Have, have a good she night. She nods to you and grabs the knife and goes back into the kitchen. Uh, the door closed. Yeah, Leaving nice you guys you alone. You're alone in the bar. Mm -hmm. It's a slight little TV facing you guys with nothing on it. That black screen reflecting your images. We're all in agreement that this is going to lower her Yelp score, right? Oh, yes. It's odd. Yep. Extremely odd. A bit rude, really. Did anyone know, are we going to get like totally fucked on the bill if we make drinks? Because I could use a drink. Is, is there a menu? Uh, and Rindis will head back behind the bar and start rifling around uh, for like a bar menu and what their drinking options are. Yeah, looking back, there's really no menu, but there are several old bottles of sake, as well as one uh, aged uh, whiskey. It looks like they took a lot of effort to ensure that you can't attach any sort of alcohol to a um, associated corporation uh, so that they can serve it as they want, and maybe even charge as they want. Um, but for the most part, people haven't really touched the alcohol here, except for that bit of whiskey, which is the only bottle that doesn't have, like, a layer of dust upon it. That. I want that. I was, I was going to say, we could, we could gamble it, but uh, I suppose just a round of whiskey for everybody probably will have to suffice. It'll probably kill a good portion of our budget, knowing the way this is going. <laughs> If nothing else, we maybe... can sell Molly's panties on the vending machines. 
Excuse me. What the that fuck, Rindis? Come on. Just immediately starts pouring. Just <laughs> it's like it's like well, it's just something that happens here. Yeah. yeah I bet no, it is. this is something <laughs> that happens here. And Sophia taps you in the middle of your forehead. <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm with her. That's. Uh... Dom, no, I'll take a double of whatever you're pouring. <laughs> she grabs a larger glass for Sophie. You're yeah. paying for it. Sure. Yeah. The the silence is kind of not silence, but the act of talking and engagement of friendly friendlies with each other is disrupted by the sound up above that uh, is that your Irish Canadian friend? Uh, it does sound like the moving of such a creature why don't we go out on the town? Suddenly, this place is a little claustrophobic. What about that package? Should we? Yes, we should check curious. that. Molly, why don't you do the honors? And <sighs> so if you'll wave to one of the low tables that we can all gather around for show and tell. <laughs> Excellent. You, you still want open that drink, though, Sophia? Always. All right. Yeah, I'll pour. <laughs> Make fix everyone a scotch, a double for Sophie. <laughs> Mitch, I have a uh, disadvantage, which I'm required. I actually have two that I'm required to roll in session one, but I think one is kind of relevant to this moment. Would now be a good time to roll to see if I get cravings? Yes. Each. Yes, it would. Uh, just... All right. Uh, shall we use that nightmare mode that we yes. have? Uh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. We'll go 2d6. Okay. Let me double check <laughs> what I got to roll with this. So, with this one, I need to go back a page. I need to roll plus zero. All right, so I didn't roll with anything. It's just a straight 2d6. Four. <laughs> oh, that's uh, the good first roll, a, a four. So what happens? Uh, let me read it to you. On a below a nine, the GM takes three hold. The GM may spend hold to make a move for your addiction. For example, you cannot resist using, you run out, you become indebted to a dangerous person, you put yourself in danger while under the influence, or you ruin something important to you, like a relationship, while under the influence. All right, I will note that down. I have three hold on you. And what does this and look like as the cravings start to bubble up? she stares into the glass she's handed and takes at first just a small sip and then she scratches the back of her hand and promptly swallows down whatever this cheap alcohol is and puts the glass firmly on the table but she keeps a hold of it because she knows if she lets go her hand will be trembling and she's trying to keep it subtle and she'll wait for Molly to begin opening the package before she lets go of that glass and tucks her hand away. But I imagine for like the next five minutes or so, she'll be doing just like little nervousy things and like scratching the back of her, her hand. And she has um, long nails, so they'll leave like sharp pink marks on her skin. Um, and Cass, can you check your roll 20 settings and make sure you've turned off your beeps for rolls? It's just under the settings. If you can just unenable that so we don't get the beeps. Thank you. Yeah. And as Molly opens that little package, the first thing that plops out is a little tooth. White, pristine, with a little bit of yellow at the tips of it. And then a DVD. On the front of it, it says episode one to my friends. (sighs) 
Dylan. Why is, Why is there a tooth? Why? Also, Jinx, you owe me a soda. <laughs> Here, I just bought you a whiskey. There you go. <laughs> Gladly. I'll need it. Uh, and you just... <laughs> But, yeah, no, Molly's right. Why a tooth? I don't know. It's... You know, Dylan loved to freak us out sometimes. It's probably not even real. You're You're the take theory. a look at it, actually. I'm, I, I will kind of... Domino will just pick it up, not giving a shit. Just take a close look at it. Does it appear to be a real human tooth? It does. Yeah. Can I see? Yeah. You are the creepy thing expert. Yeah, I, I, a cryptozoologist, but yes, creepy thing expert. It falls under that. Just so it's that's a real tooth. What kind of tooth, by the way? Is it like front tooth, molar, molar, back tooth, molar? Yeah. Uh, was there anything strange that his family told us? Anything missing? From his mouth? Yeah. He clearly put this nope. together. Why don't we just put the DVD in that TV and see? I'm sure he'll tell us. Do they have a DVD player? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have a VHS, a DVD player, all sorts of things here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put a DVD combo. The old DVD combo. It's a classic yeah. hostel common room where they've kind of got everything, but it's all slightly dated. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it'd be high tech if it was the 90s. <laughs> but yeah, you slip the uh, DVD in, uh, and this is what you see. Okay. Death is nothing at all. It does count. I have merely slipped into the next room. Nothing has happened. Everything remains exactly as it was. I am I and you are you. And the life that we lived so fondly together remains untouched, unchanged. Whatever we were to each other, that we are still. Call me by the old familiar name. Speak of me in the easy way that you always used. Put no difference into your tone. Wear no false, forced air of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh. <laughs> La laugh as we always laughs at the little jokes that we enjoyed together. Play. Smile. Think of me. Pray for me. Let my name be ever the household word that it always was. Let it be said without effort. Let the ghost of a shadow on it. Life means all that it ever meant. It is what it ever was. There is an unbroken, there is an 
definite and unbroken continuity. What is this death but a negligible accident? Why should I be out of mind? Because I am out of sight. I am but waiting. I am but waiting for you. For an interval. Just round the corner. All is well. <sighs> Nothing is hurt. Nothing is lost. One brief moment, and all will be as it was before. <laughs> oh, we will laugh at the trouble of passing when we meet again. There's that crackling Where? of the black and white specks upon the TV. And that's all that remains. Where did he go? What does that mean? What? What in the world did we just watch? Molly Polly, make it play again. Molly. D Dom, are you all right? What happened to him? I, I don't, I don't know. He was always, always a little out there, and, but what the fuck was that, man? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was so strange. <sighs> it's not enough that he's gone. He's got to just kind of fuck with us too. What's that? What is that? Is any of this. I don't. I don't like it. I don't. I don't like that he would do this. He wouldn't. He, that's not. He wouldn't he try to hurt us him. like that. It's like he knew. He knew something was gonna happen. Could he have known? Why? I did. I didn't. I've been kind of not trying to think about it, but he's. I mean, it seems like he. You know, he, he didn't want to live anymore. What? Where even was this? Just... A lot of places, it looks like. What the fuck, Dylan? What the fuck? It, so if you could have that bottle. Yes, and Sophie will slam the bottle towards you, and she's gonna go and run up the stairs and get Dylan because he has some questions to answer. Excellent. For... Are you gonna take a bottle with you, Sophia? 
I think she's distracted by Rindis asking for it, so hands it to Rindis and will run oh, I, I, hands I shaking. It. Oh, sorry, my bad. Domnal, sorry. Give it to Domnal. And then hands shaking, legs kind of jelly, stumble, and then run up those stairs back towards the bunks. Excellent. You go up the um, stairs um, to that same hallway. Uh, you notice that the door to your rooms are all open. A little bit of light from outside peeking its head in. There's a silence to the upstairs, a sort of disassociation from the first that makes you feel as if you are all alone, Sophia. She looks around anxiously for a moment and then hurries, and she goes to grab her backpack off of her bunk where she kind of just tossed it after she'd taken Dylan out. And she rifles through and checks her things are still in that bag. And assuming everything is still pretty much as she left it, she'll go and grab Dylan off that bunk. Yeah. You grab Dylan. The moment you do, you hear kind of a, a slight bit of... Um... A sound behind you, almost like static. Just heard at the end of the TV. That. Where is that coming from? You turn around and you notice a small little shape in the center of the room. Its ears twitching. Those same eyes gazing up at you that you just saw less than an hour ago out on the sidewalk. It looks like it's breathing, this small little rabbit. I don't understand. This is sick. And she looks around for someone to blame. And also for something to move this creature with, not willing to kick it around with her foot as such, but looking for like a broom or some yeah. thing like that. You know that in doing your research that uh, usually one of the walls can kind of shift a little bit uh, with a little closet behind and you do see a slight bit of wall that you can move to the side. Surely there must be something back there. You stay there, she says to Dylan as she perches him back in the bunk and steps over that creature and hurries to find something. She doesn't want a dead thing where they're sleeping. Or a not quite dead thing. She's not sure. Yeah. You slide the door open and just on the other side um, you see various cleaning supplies and the broom is kind of set in the back it's something you'll probably have to get on your knees and kind of reach for crawl into a little bit and stark though I hate you Dylan She's tutting as she goes down to creep in to grab grab something to deal with the uh, the creature. Yeah. And that urge of yours is kind of simmering back up. The sweet smell, that burning down your throat. And as you are moving a little bit closer, you know that one of the cleaning supplies Right, that almost alcoholic leaning cleaning supply uh, that you've sometimes used in the past. It's right there. And so with that, I'm going to take a hold and I want you to drink it. It's enticing. And she reaches out and snatches, I imagine, one of those cartons and just spins the cap off and just takes a swig. Yeah. It burns. 
kind of steaming. And as you look down at it, moving past the necessity of it, you can translate the words on it, and you know that it's Clorox, a bleach of sorts. And you can feel it almost burning, going down that gurgling of your stomach. And that smell. <laughs> she wipes her tongue to try and get it off of her tongue and shoves the still uncapped bottle to the side, scrabbling for the pole of some cleaning device. Yeah. You wipe your tongue and you feel a slight pull, a dangling sense on the tip of your tongue, a slight bit of your flesh just wipes away onto your hand, almost like a little slug with the white pores of it tingling and standing on end. I want you to roll Keep It Together. Which All right. normally is 2d10 plus your willpower, but do we have anything yeah. altering that? You know what? Uh, since this is only the second roll, let's do one last nightmare roll, and then we'll take us off a nightmare mode. <laughs> Colin for uh, and Colin, I see you'd like to bump Domino up to a five in distress. Would anyone else yeah. like to up there? The distress. In light character? of the DVD, <laughs> in light of the DVD, I think he should be up at five. Yeah. Yep, yeah. All right. If you put them into <laughs> chat, I'll update. Uh, for anyone wondering, that's what the tallies are. Five is bad, one is good-ish. That's right. why I have six. mine right here. <laughs> that would be a three, oh. which is a fail. Ooh, that is, uh, that's not good. So I'm going to leave you there, and we're going to come back to you. Damo, Molly, Rendis, how are things down below? Probably wonder what's taking rough. Sophie so long. So. Rendis would have been at Dom's side trying to, to help console him. Uh, probably shakily passing around the whiskey, not paying attention to how much everybody's drinking now in light of it. Uh, but she perks up and she says, Wait, it, it said Osaka uh, on the video. Yeah. Is that important? He, I don't know what he, of any of was that. Was he out here already before us? That doesn't make sense. What was he doing in Osaka, and why did that cause him to get so distressed? And when would he have come here? Why didn't he just wait? Yeah. We were always supposed to do this trip together. He went without us, and then went fucking crazy, I guess? <laughs> I don't know. We should, we should go to, maybe not go to Osaka, but find out what Osaka did this. What are we, how are we going to find that? Rindy, we're going to go, I don't know, find the, the bridge that he was on when he filmed that? I don't know. What, <laughs> I was going to us. I'm sorry, I just, this is going to cost us so much fucking money, oh my god. Yeah. Oh, any sense. But we're we're here already, so why not? Get we could get the answers. The answers are are important. We are all thinking it anyways. Why? Why did he do this? Maybe going there can help. Well, I. Kind of like Soph's plan, you know. Why don't we just Why don't we just ask him? Huh? It's just, I don't know. Are we'll we going to have a for Dylan now? We could. We could. We could visit a Shinto shrine. Maybe they could try something. 
just kidding. You know, I, I don't. I don't like to do that kind of shit anymore. <laughs> I, I mean, I've seen what you can do, Dom. But maybe we could find somewhere a little more sacred. I don't think. I don't think this is a good place for that. There's. Yeah. Sophie is taking a really long time. Let me. Let me. Uh... I'll, I'll go. I'll go check on her. Just yeah. I I need to get up and walk around a little bit anyway. I need. I'll be okay. Just let me let me go. Let me go look. And Dom's gonna get up okay. and go upstairs to find Sophie. Excellent. And you go I have a question for right. you there, Mitch, mm -hmm. related to that. Um, yeah. Sophie has been encountering some weird shit upstairs, and mm -hmm. I'm just curious. If this would bring into play my disadvantage, which is involuntary medium, um, which is I activated so. by Let's... the presence of spiritual entities or haunted places. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up. And go ahead and roll. Okay, so we're off of. Oh, I'm on five. Does that put me at nightmare mode? No, that's just uh, makes you a little bit more tense. So you'll see uh, on the stability oh, track. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it'll say rolling at a disadvantage, so you're, you're taking some penalties, uh, minus one or minus two, depending on where you're at on the track. Okay, so it says um, when I encounter roll plus zero, uh, mm -hmm. when I encounter spiritual entities or haunted places. So um, just 2d10? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, wow, shit. Cool. I'm actually oh. disappointed in a way. Um, <laughs> so I resist the possession. Yeah, as you move forward, you hear a slight ding. That same little charm uh, dangling uh, that you heard when Samantha first showed you that uh, little bell. Um, and there's a slight kind of rising of the the skin and the hairs on the back of your neck. Your ear kind of catches the resounding creak of every step. Uh, but I think what's most noticeable is a lack of noise coming from where you know Sophia probably should be. Yeah. So it's like sort of Dom, Dom kind of feels something almost pass through him in, a, in a, for a moment there. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Familiar feeling for him. This happens to him all the time. But kind of hairs prickle on the back of his neck and gets goosebumps for a moment and breathes through it just <sighs> Sophie 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 and start moving toward like Sophie's room um, kind of quickly I mean at, at, at pace Sophie Sophie okay. you there coming around on the other side. The room is empty. Sophie! But there's a slight kind of tapping on the wall. Uh, one of the sliding doors is closed, but here on the other side, a slight tapping. Okay. Um... Dom really cautiously puts a hand on the door and moves it aside really slowly and kind of like peeking in where, I mean, I don't know what I'm walking into here, but just peeking in, making sure I'm not walking in on something I'm not supposed to be seeing. I don't know if Sophie's getting dressed or what the hell's going on in here, but just like very, very kind of one eye around the corner kind of. Yeah. This place is definitely one of those places that you know is to be a closet uh, within Sophia's room. Uh, moving it aside, uh, the first thing you see eye to eye is Sophia. And Sophia, you see Donald right in front of you. Your vision is blurry. There's a burning in your chest, a breathing of ember and charcoal. And you can feel a little bit of this wet, moist, red dripping down your lips. And what am I looking at here, Mitch? You see Sophia, 
her eyes open, looking towards you, blood running down her lips. Sophia, Dom, you're Dom runs. Dom, Dom runs toward her and does like a, like drops to his knees and like a slide to get kind of like under her to because she's leaning forward. Um, it's, holy Jesus Christ, Sophie! What the fuck? Talk to me. What What are you doing? <laughs> I'm fine. It's off of me. You're bleeding from the. What did you... what did you do? <laughs> I think I slipped. I just cut my lip. Don't worry about it. There was a dead thing on the floor I was trying to clean up. <laughs> what the... Yeah. is that bleach? I don't know, it's a cleaning cupboard. <laughs> And she's trying to Is lie that... her ass off that no, I did not put that bleach on my mouth. I fell, I cut my lip. It's a cleaning cup. Is there like an empty I bottle of bleach right nearby? <laughs> there is a open bottle of, uh, I mean, it's in Japanese, so depending on how much you know, but there's kind of the telltale signs of, uh, you know, Clorox bleach just in another language. I mean, that, the... that ammonia spell, that ammonia spell is powerful. I mean, oh, I it's. Whew. You'd recognize that anywhere, and it's a very powerful sign. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Trying to clean up. The rabbit is dying. They have to. You're do trying something. to bleach a dying rabbit? No, I'm looking for a broom. And he kind of like puts an arm around her, and it's like, are you? Sophie, what's going on? What are you... Our you dead friend just left us a DVD and a tooth and there's a dead thing dying that was in this street and I hate this hotel and I want to go home already. I know, I don't, me too. I don't want to be here, but what... <laughs> you trying to... You... We just lost Dylan and now you're trying to follow him? Is that We're what you're doing? doing anything! Stop making things up and she's gonna shove Domino like two hands just to fuck? push away. Not super violent, but enough to be like, you're in my space and I want you not to be anymore. <sighs> Stop. Just be quiet. Are you trying to hurt yourself, Soph? No. No. <sighs> Oh, come on. We gotta... You're bleeding. We gotta do something about that. I'll clean up. Don't worry about it. Come on, come downstairs. Come on. Please. Please. I won't say Just anything bring me up some water, okay? Okay. Okay. Can I take... Can I take Dylan with me? Yes, I never want to see him again. You won't. And Dom picks up the urn. I'll be right back. Stay right here, and I... I I won't say anything to the others, but just don't move, okay? Okay. And he'll go back okay. downstairs with Dylan. Alright. Yeah, Molly, Rendis, you see uh, Donald coming down. She's not... Well? She's not doing good, y'all. She's just... Um, you know, she's upset. So, just... She just needs okay. a minute. She asked me to bring her a glass of water, so I'm just gonna get that, but here's, uh... <laughs> here's the man of the hour. <laughs> and, uh... Puts Dylan down on the table. 
And I'll go behind the bar and kind of grab, I guess, the little um, soda gun thing and yeah, fill up a glass of water. Yeah, shoot off some water to it. It has a slight uh, brownish tint to it, but hey, it's water, right? Yeah, that's famous last words. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he's going to, like, Donald's going to fill the glass and then go straight back upstairs and just try to avoid as much conversation with these two as possible because uh, he doesn't want to be asked questions at all about what just happened. Excellent. Sophia, how are you doing? Uh, I'm good. Sophia is having a moment and she's stubbornly looking around for this handle because she's going to go and deal with this rabbit. And then she's going to get her shoes and she's going to get the fuck out of this hostel and go out to Tokyo and figure out the rest from that's the next bit. (laughs) Yeah, there is no rabbit. There's nothing in the center of the room. It's empty now. She's got this broom and I think she looks around for something to destroy with it and I'm really glad Dylan isn't in this room right now. Um <sighs> she she looks around and I think she just starts beating up her rickety suitcase. Maybe she turns and knocks it and it does that juddery thing because the wheels are wonky, and she just starts beating the suitcase with the handle of this broom. Just venting the frustration and upset and confusion she has as well as the physical distress from doing what she just did yeah there is a certain feel and sound associated with uh beating certain objects uh, one of which has a lasting impression on the psyche uh the others, not so much. It's an exchange of anger. And as you whack at this um, suitcase, it feels different. It feels soft underneath, a sort of hardness just beyond flesh. That same anger and guilt associated whenever you deal out pain and misery to another human being fills you, kind of associated with the embers that are burning in your stomach. And by blinking, you can almost see images of a back bruised and scarred of quieted screams of muffled muffled sobs and the shaking of hands. And that's when Dom arrives. Seeing Sophia wailing on the suitcase. Is there a rabbit in there? She lets out this choked sob sound and drops the broom. And if it's okay with you, Colin, she'll kind of fold herself into Domnal and just cry. And then she okay. feels the churning and the burning in her stomach, I think, and she'll turn her head and just kind of disgorge into the hallway as her stomach attempts to remove the poison from itself. Yeah, that's... Not to go all meta, but former EMT, that's gonna burn bad coming back up. It's gonna burn real bad, so that's gonna hurt. <laughs> so I think Dom... Yeah. Um hugs her and then kind of feels her start to retch and I mean if you're crying I mean Dom's gonna cry right along with you just you know Dom holds her for a minute they kind of cry together but then feels her start to retch and is like well okay 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 and as you just chuck it into the hallway um yeah he's a gentleman hold your hair back uh (laughs) while you okay all right, all right. There you go. There you go. Sophia and Molly and Rindis. Rindis. Need it. <laughs> yeah, Molly and Rindis, you hear this kind of retching uh, above on the second floor. Oh, that's not good. No. Um, she 
<laughs> Brindis will quickly take the tooth and she'll slide it into the urn uh, so that all of Dylan is there. At least hopefully all of Dylan is there. Um, and grabs the urn and says, we should go check. Right, we should, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, Molly will grab doll. a bar towel. Like, what can that do? But <laughs> yeah, Rindis will head up, carefully carrying Dylan. Molly will follow. Yeah. And you guys see uh, Dom and Sophia. Dom holding Sophia's hair back with a puddle of grotesqueries on the floor. You're okay. You're you're okay, Sophie. You're all right. There you go. I imagine it's mostly like a clear, cloudy liquid because she's not someone who eats a great deal. Um, so it's Ooh. just, and then at some point it just hits that point where there's just nothing really left. But it's yeah, just dry heaving. Yeah. Sort of. And there's definitely that um, red tint to everything that comes out of you. There you go. Tom, there you go. what happened? He looks down at Soph and then looks back at Rindis and she, um, the scotch didn't sit well. Her stomach's just all fucked up and the nerves and the, but she's, she'll be okay. We should make a note of that for the owners. The scotch is making people sick. It's right. Okay. Um, yeah, she'll go and put Dylan back in his room, uh, just so he's for safekeeping. What about some fresh air, then? Can get out of here. Yeah, so how's that sound? You want to go outside for a bit, maybe? Get a breather? Let's go. And she'll okay. take a sip okay. of the water and just wince. <laughs> I'll throw the bar towel and... over the puddle. <laughs> We're great guests. Yeah. <laughs> just keep that there. Deposit is it's so mostly fucked. bleach anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just just scrub mostly that cleaning into products. the mat. <laughs> yeah. Strong acid, strong base. Um, and I'm going to, like, Dom is gonna really. Dom is very worried about about Sophia right now, so he's gonna keep really close to her as we walk. And if she will allow him, he is kind of like leading her, like arm around, you know, like okay, come on, come on, like just trying to kind of shepherd her out, hovering a little bit, but really just doesn't want to let her out of his sight right now. Come on, Soph. Oh no, I wasn't trying to hurt myself. I would never do that. I know, I know. But he wouldn't either. He didn't. <laughs> we don't know that, Soph. We don't know that. And <laughs> let's just talk about it later, okay? We don't have, we don't have to talk about this now. Come on, just try, try to stay upright, okay? <laughs> You'll be all right. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Please, and drink drink more of this, please. It's, you're going to need it. Answer the glass again. <laughs> so where are you guys headed off to? It's a lovely uh, night here in Tokyo. Would would food, we... would food help? Okay. Would food help? Could we find something uh, to kind of offset all the alcohol? Food always helps. There, there might be a, a, a ramen shop or something nearby. Get your something s starchy and heavy. Kind of soak it up. Yeah. 
Yeah, that sounds... I could go for some noodles. Fuck it, yeah. It's Tokyo, right? We might as well try and, and mm. enjoy things. And, um... Dom is gonna go to... Rindis. Um, just be like, Sophie, you're gonna be okay for a minute? I just gotta talk to... I just gotta talk to Rindis. I'll be fine. Okay. Take some more of the water, and, uh, just to demonstrate to you, like, I'm being good, I'm drinking the water. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, pull aside, Rindis. Hey, can you uh, can you go ahead? There's something I gotta do. Just quick. You're gonna and, catch uh, up. Yeah. Yeah, I'll catch up. Okay. Sure. I'll. Uh, yeah, Malls and I will make sure. That Sophie's okay. All right. Um, okay. She's a little bit. She's just a little bit raw right now. Okay, so you know, light touch. You know. Right, right. I'll, I'll text you if we find a place. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Um, okay. And uh, Dom. Um, Dom gives her a hug and kind of a. a kind of a tight hug. More. more more than he normally would, but a big, mm. uh, a, a big embrace. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Returns it, returns it. There's no uh, hesitation there. It's clear everybody's vulnerable emotional state. She hugs back and says, "It'll be all right." And uh, hey, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Doesn't leave a lot, but you got it. If. There is anything that happens. Get it on your phone, okay? <laughs> Only for you. Only for Thanks. You. And uh, she'll walk back over and uh, very carefully uh, come up to Sophie's side. And this Sophie, uh, Dom's going to hang back for a minute and take care of something, but we'll look for some food, okay? Do you need help? Offers I'm not a, arm. a child. I know that. You're, you're not, but I if you need it, I'm here. And and Dom makes eyes at Molly. Like um like keep an eye on her. Over Sophie's shoulder. We should keep going, though, guys. Uh, let's let's find something to eat. So we're just going to wander the streets. <laughs> yeah, just three girls wandering the streets at night. <laughs> uh, at this point, can I see if Sophia recognizes where else we are and anything that she may have come across in her prep for this trip? I imagine she's pulled oh, over yeah. like guidebooks and like hotspots and things. That's just who yeah. she is. Yeah, you you know uh, kind of the um, close by that there's a marketplace. It's kind of why you guys chose this spot. Uh, but it's almost like the equivalent of food trucks, which was more of a permanent basis uh, with people dealing out wonderful street foods, ramen, um, uh, bean paste, uh, as well as the ever famous corn smoothie. <laughs> Excuse about me. About a mile away. I mean, Poor don't knock people. it till you try it. I, I would try it. Not gonna, right? not gonna yuck your yum. Do they yeah, have I tried it and like... I, I will knock it. No. <laughs> <laughs> not good. Do they have any cute uh, little, like, cake places or, like, little donut pop type things? You know, they decorate them like yeah. Pikachu and all that bullshit. They, they have, like, like, those little cupcakes that are, that are, like, <laughs> a pokey pop. <laughs> You definitely deserve a Poke Pop. Um, but yeah, you guys uh, make your way to this marketplace and it's bustling with people despite the hour. Um, several shops on either side selling little trinkets as well as you see um, these masks, which each have this frilled up hair in uh, kind of in various poses of anguish, sadness, and happiness. Um, 
the lights from the top of the the skyscrapers these buildings shining down the of these advertisements kind of make the the whole place feel a little surreal as if you're underwater the variation of colors kind of ever changing before you no one looks at you no one pays attention but you can enjoy some niceties here at your pleasure Dom, what, do you think what are you up to? I'm actually going to be right back, so you can go to them for a minute. Um, All right. I have to, I have to run. All right, back. ladies. <laughs> what are we up to? Uh, probably eyeing uh, various options, uh, but kind of giving a glance to Molly as well briefly, just kind of like follow follow my lead. And then it's just like, Sophie, anything stick out that you want to see? Try food? I'm... I don't know. She, she kind of takes a deep inhale and... She's not actually drunk, hungover, she realizes, and food doesn't entirely repulse her, even if her stomach and throat are killing her. Um, maybe something soft, like an ice cream or something. Oh. And she oh. eyes the street meats and is like, if only <laughs> one day I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely... You, uh, there's a nice little ice cream shop uh, where every scoop is kind of reminiscent of a particular Pokemon. Uh, cute, with little chubby cheeks where they put the sprinkles on that make it look like whiskers. Um, I'm imagining like shaved ice where they do like the yellow dye and then they get two dots of pink dye and you get your pink Yeah, yeah, cube. like... Anything it's not exactly else? the most nutritious, but heck, let's have ice cream. <laughs> Excellent. So this Going is over. The capital game. <laughs> well, hold on. <laughs> uh, you approach this little ice cream place. Uh, they are currently serving um, uh, two women who are enraptured by the sweetness of it uh laughing and speaking in japanese as they walk off before you are two bald men each one uh, probably about the age of 40. they look like twins uh with smiling faces each one missing a tooth uh and wearing a heavily stained uh tank top uh, in very um hesitant uh, Japanese. Uh, one of them looks over at Molly uh, and, and says, um, thank you uh, for, 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 for coming. Um, would you like uh, the strawberry or yellow flavor? Thea, do you have a choice? She, I think, is just like, this is why we can't have anything nice. Thanks, man. <laughs> ice cream is good. <laughs> just delicious yellow flavored ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> I think she'll ask them what flavor is the yellow in Japanese. The other one, uh, with more confidence than his twin brother, nods, uh, I believe banana. Does that tantalize you? Does it entice you? Would you like some? We'll take three yellow. <laughs> Just, the other one's uh, I'm, 
I'm I'm allergic to banana. Is it the actual banana? It's as uh banana as uh <laughs> um as sushi in the hospitals. Oh, tantalizing. Isn't it? Uh, what the hell? It's not like anything worse can happen uh, on this trip. <laughs> that bad trip you've had? <laughs> mm. where, often, where, often. Where did you come from? Oh, uh, America. Mm. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> and the other one begins uh, scooping out this uh, yellow-looking ice cream. Uh, you can see that there's sweat on these two gentlemen. Um, it's uh, sort of hot where they're out. There must have some sort of heater uh, pushing down on them. As he leans forward, you can almost see a slight bit of sweat dribble down his chin and onto... <laughs> Uh, the first ice cream um, as he starts putting them one on one on top of the glass container plastic um. <sighs> so uh, that mm, will be a certain amount uh, <laughs> mm, um, would you uh, cash cash your credit uh, Rindus will uh, fish into our coat and take out Billfold. Uh, I've got this one, guys. It's all right. And she'll <laughs> put some money down. Thank, thank you so much, she'll say in very broken Japanese, just doing her best. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat too much uh, the, 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 the teeth they, they fall out is it one to get on my feet huh what uh, bill of eat? sale uh, it's, yes yes uh, and he takes a pencil and just kind of on a piece of paper writes down three Y uh, and then the amount just below it. Excellent. Thank you. We need to keep track of our expenses. Of course. Uh, yeah, we don't want another uh, Seattle debacle, Molly. Keeping things organized and records tidy is the way to go. And you have your ice cream. Sophia, <laughs> I imagine, has left Brindis and Molly to pay and is leaning, like, either against, like, a public bench or maybe, like, a lamppost, something like that. And she's sipping her water and sulking because ice cream got ruined. Yeah. Uh, as as soon as they walk out, she and like when the door is closed, she looks to Molly like, "We're not eating these, right?" No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and she she'll she'll quickly collect the two cups and then go to Sophie and she's like, "Please let me <laughs> let me take that." And she takes it and just very quickly dumps them into the trash. Yeah. As you go to dump, uh, kind of let letting the ice cream uh, fall into the trash. Uh, you see a hand reach out and kind of grab it. Uh, the ice cream kind of flowing through the individual's hands, dripping down into the trash can. It goes up and you notice it is one of the twins smiling at you. Best not waste the, these things. Biggest biggest smile no no of course not uh we weren't going to waste them there we just noticed there was a uh, a hair 
definitely lying. There was a hair in, in one, and we didn't want to be rude and throw it out in, in your shop. Uh, but, uh, and she'll just very carefully dip a finger and then just, good though, thank you. Good. I, t- we, we, we do offer delivery. If you want t- us t- to bring it To your, 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 the, the place you're staying. <laughs> Not in this world or the next. Please leave us alone. <laughs> she, Sophia is kind of uh, seeing her friends still talking to this dude and is like, why? <laughs> Don't worry. This isn't, this isn't her type. <laughs> um, <laughs> she, <laughs> when Sophie chimes in, she just nods and she says, uh, what my friend means to say is, uh, no thank you, but if we have uh, another craving for uh, ice cream, we will come back to the shop. We, we of course, believe in supporting local businesses. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, and you see him kind of rubbing his eye, and a little bit of that ice cream gets into it uh, as he continues to rub it. It's fine. <laughs> Have, have a good time here in in in, in, in Tokyo. Mm-hmm. He just stares at you, rubbing his eye. Just... While we have a miserable time in Tokyo, I do want to say a thank you to Colin Omicron for gifting those five subs. Welcome to the Chaos Chorus, friends. Mitch, every five subs on this channel unlocks something. And in the case of this game, it's something happens, i.e. an event. Mm. And I really wish I'd put in a different option because I don't want anything to happen anymore. I'm good. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's okay. I can, I can take this mm-hmm. one. It's fine. Whoop, whoop. I would like to thank the uh, I would like to thank the United States Internal Revenue Service for giving me my tax return and paying for those subscriptions. So, congratulations, everyone! <laughs> Yay, internal. Those guys. <laughs> yeah. IRS. Hey, my dad works for those guys. It's okay. Well, they're fine by cool. me right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Rendis, uh, as you're staring at this individual, um, if you've ever been in kind of an echo chamber, or if you've ever had kids, you know, the screaming, wailing around 3 a.m. of a little child yelling as if in pain and terror and despair, as if everything counts on their ability to shred their own vocal cords, to communicate the simplest thought, which is, I need, I want. And that's kind of echoing in your head loud and unyielding. Mm. Okay. Um, wow. The man is still there too? He is. You see him rubbing his eye and with his other hand he... (laughs) Wow, that's... She's she's just going to very slowly backpedal away from him, not sure where this is coming from, but the noise is deafening and rattling to the core and just... Uh, okay, bye-bye. Uh, uh, Jane Saranara uh, mumbles under her breath, please don't kill us, and just keeps walking and probably gets back to Molly and Sophie and says, I, I, I'm glad we threw that out. I don't think, I I don't think there was something good in that ice cream. My head is killing me. Do you want to go back to the hostel then? No, 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 I don't. I don't. Looking at them, you see their mouth move, but it's that noise in your head, grinding gears of that screaming, echoing child. 
You can't Ooh. hear what they're saying. <sighs> no, no, I don't. I don't. I don't want to risk it. Them following us back there. We should keep mm. walking for a minute. Uh, what? A, what about if we head somewhere else? Let's keep going. There is a famous junction or building this way, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we're here to sightsee, right? Let's see some sights. Uh, and she's going to take out her phone and probably text Dom as well. And it's just WTF, weird out here, where are you? Why don't you go ahead and keep it together, Rendis? All right. I get to roll tonight. Keep it together. Zero. That's a 13. Nice. All right. Uh, so you get to choose one of those options. So it could be kind of like scared, guilty, um, distracted probably would be a good... Uh, Oh, I think I think distracted is a good one. Um, she, so you'll be taking she does, a she does spoo- too. Yeah, she does spooky stuff for a living, so scared isn't really there, but distracted, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. And you see kind of uh, on one of the park benches a woman kind of cradling a small object uh, wrapped in cloth, uh, turning away from you, and you can see her reflection in the window of the street shop just across from her. She is humming. And the humming's the only thing that kind of breaks through the utterance of this child echoing in your head. It just kind of stops and looks into the window, staring after uh, putting the phone away. Uh, probably long enough to let the two of them get a good ways ahead of her. Oh, there it is again. Ah. Yeah. Looking just... at the the reflection of the window, you notice that despite this woman looking towards the window, and the reflection should be a, providing some sense of information of her face. Um, but in the reflection of the window, instead, you just see the back of her in that same small bundle clutching against her chest. Is there a store sign for this uh, building? Yeah, it looks like some sort of music shop where they sell records. She doesn't... uh, She probably is just very quickly... Hey, guys, I need to... And she uh, says it very quickly and then goes for the shop door. Guess we're going there. That need to figure out what's going on, driving her forward. Uh, She opens the door and and in her bad tourist Japanese is just, Hello? Excuse me? They're silent. Takes takes a couple slow steps forward, uh, looking around the shop. And there's a moment where there's the urge to take out her phone and get some footage. She's like, oh, this might be perfect. Uh, Phone out. Uh, Excuse me. Gets a little closer. Hello? Yeah. That sound, I... that baby noise echoing and pounding away at your head just comes louder. I'll close the distance to the woman and just very carefully hand out towards her. Hello, I just need to ask you a question. You touch her shoulder, bear. And as your hands kind of come back, you notice that bits of her flesh stay attached to your fingers. 
you're pulling on it every little bit of veins almost like a puppeteer uh, and, and she uh, brings the camera up to her hand and just tries to see if she sees the same thing in the camera lens um, it's just like this can't be can't be real uh, back pedals just a little bit looking at the video on the camera all you see is that same image of Dylan on the screen kind of laying his head against the pavement drops her phone and backs away <sighs> Probably right up to the door. That's not, not right. No, it can't be real. Rendis, to... Rendis, dear. I hear coming from this feminine figure. The skin on her shoulder, kind of slipping off and falling on the ground. Rendis. Rendis, take care of your kid. Uh, sorry, that's not mine. I. No, no, that's not mine. I. Take care no kids. Of your kid, please. That's. Can you see the figure get up? Funny joke. Funny joke. No kids. I, I made sure of that. Sorry, no. And, uh, doesn't doesn't even bother for the phone. It it belongs to the shop now. Uh, she backs up towards the door, a little more back right up against it. As you back up, you notice tiny little fingers creeping up on her other shoulder, and then this black and blue top of the skull slowly rising with its two beady eyes blinking and then close and you notice its mouth kind of extending over the shoulder and that same squealing pitching cry in your head and then it's gone and everything is okay as you are looking at yourself your reflection outside of the shop it is closed you can't come in Behind you are Molly and Sophia. They've just watched you stare at yourself for a couple of minutes. I... What the hell? Are you all right? I... When did I get out here? You've been standing there for couple three minutes already just staring I... oh god that that ice cream must have done something to my head I thought I went inside I saw something I saw a, a woman and the, the noise was coming from inside and she what goes to the noise? door and tries the handle yeah, you try to handle it, it's locked. Whatever this place is during the day, it is not right now. It is closed, bare, silent, empty, and dark. No, that's not right. I, I filmed it, and she reaches for her, her phone and tries to find a video. Yeah. You do I see a video. It. I, I... You see Look, yourself see, in the it's... reflection. A slight tear going down your left eye. I... Maybe I'm we're sorry, all guys. a little jet-legged right now. There's there... It's been a day. Definitely. Definitely jet lag. Sorry, yeah. Molly. Sophie, I... I'm sorry. It's probably just the nerves. I don't think it's anything at all. And she'll close the phone and not show them what she recorded. I don't think it was anything at all. I think I think you're right. I think it was just the stress of the ice cream shop and everything else that's going on. 
Let's get going before those creepy guys catch up to us. Where's mm -hmm. Domno gone? Was there a text response to sending to him? Speaking of which, let's go on over <laughs> to Dom. How you doing? <laughs> oh, not good. Uh, Dom had something he wanted to do after everybody left and he had time to himself because Dom never leaves anywhere. Uh, if you were to open up that gym bag that he tossed into his room, you would find, well, mostly just a couple pairs of identical black jeans and black t-shirts. Uh, doesn't take up a whole lot of room. Probably could have taken all that in a shopping bag, to be honest with you. The rest of the space in that gym bag is taken up with his books. Because Dom has the advantage occult library that he never leaves home without. So his grimoires are with him. And uh, Dom also has a advantage called uh, Dabbler in the Occult. And there was a suggestion earlier of a seance. And while Dom doesn't wish to suggest to subject his friends to the same kind of things he's had to deal with now for several years from having dabbled quite a bit back in college. He is very confused and he would like to get answers directly from the source. So he wants to take the urn from Sophia's room and talk to Dylan. Excellent. Go ahead and roll, my dear friend. So, uh, Dabbler in the Occult, roll plus soul. So that is, for me, 2d10 plus 3. I'm pretty good at this shit. 10. Make a minor error. GM chooses. All right, minor error. There, you feel a slight pain um, back in your jaw. You see a little bit of fireflies dancing uh, within this place. What does this look like? Yeah, so For Dom you, goes to Dom goes to Sophia's room and takes the urn, uh, and then takes it to his room and puts it on the floor, sits down, cross-legged in front of the urn. And he brought his, he always brings his, his things with him just in case he has a few candles. They're all pretty, um, they've all been pretty well loved and pretty well used, so they're burned down pretty low. And he sets them up around the urn, um, just makes a circle around the urn with these candles pours out um, a little salt circle around it and sits down, shuts the lights in the room, lights the candles, and opens up his grimoire, which looks suspiciously like the cult player's handbook, and <laughs> <laughs> begins to recite. So it's not the first time Dom's done this. Um, he's been conducting seances since he was a teenager. Even still, um, the events of today and uh, how rattled he is, he doesn't get the incantation just quite perfect. It's very, it's a very difficult. And he's, his nerves are just a little shot, so as he mumbles to himself, he kind of shuts his eyes and recites this incantation and catches himself occasionally, realizing he's not saying it quite right, he's not getting the inflection quite right, and kind of winces. But powers through it. And keeps, keeps reciting, keeps speaking, keeps his breath even, keeps his back straight. And then when he finishes, he puts his head back, and says, talk to me, Dylan. Talk to me. Why are you doing There's this? There's a shudder. 
shutter at the window. And then you hear something you haven't heard in a couple of months. And that same optimistic tone that Dylan used to sing. Time is on my side. Yes, it is. Is on my side. Yes, it is. I miss you. Come outside. I've missed you too. I'm in the forest, Dom. Let's talk like we used to. That place isn't exactly safe for me. Okay. Wait for me. Wait for me. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. I have been. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you soon, Dylan. I look forward to it. Dom. And he leaves the candles lit and stands and it, it takes a deep breath but after that momentary hesitation, that momentary just okay, steal yourself he without any further hesitation goes straight outside yeah and on leaving, you can kind of see a silhouetted figure in the bamboo forest at dark. And um, can we say, like, at this point, this is when I get the, the text? Like, the where the fuck are you? Text. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Dom starts to type a reply. Held up. Give me a little bit. But... He shuts his phone. He doesn't send it. Excellent. Okay. And he goes into the forest. <laughs> so this is, uh, I know a while back, someone said, offer something bad and something good. Um, so, Molly, your phone vibrates. All right, I check it. Yeah. It's a video message from Dom. That's odd. Right, I hit play. Yeah. You see Dom in the room, uh, his bags in hand. He says, uh, things are, are too much. I'm, uh, I'm going home. Uh, don't wait up for me. Uh, I'm already heading out. I already got my taxi. Um, don't wait up for me. Don't try to get me at the airport. I'm fine. He smiles, and that's the end of the message. Brenda, Sophia, D Dom's leaving. What? No. Hold on. He no. Sent me this, look, he sent me this video, and it says he's leaving. Rinda's already has her trick running. <laughs> yeah, Rinda's has her phone out. Dom's like. He's not speed dial one, but probably listed as the emergency <laughs> contact. So she hits it and calls him. It, it yeah, just lets it ring as they're running. Yeah, it goes straight to voicemail every time. And Dom, you head out, <laughs> heading towards yes. that bamboo oh. forest. Uh huh. Uh huh. There's a point um, where the light of the city can't penetrate any further into the bamboo forest. You can see kind of trickles of light slipping in, uh, but that shadow, that same grayness with, as you get closer to it, despite not being able to make out any detail of this shadow, you do with particular 
um, reminiscence, reminiscence, see two eyes, the whites of this individual's eyes looking at you. And that smile, white and happy. And it's almost like there's a crickling, the kind of the black and white of a TV with a silhouette and a sort of twitching associated with it. Now would be a good time to mention, I guess, is this another involuntary yes. medium? Yeah. Okay. Roll it, roll it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. So yeah, it's just it, this is just straight two d ten. Um, there's no bonus for this. Correct. It's just plus zero. Okay. <laughs> Uh-huh. So the entity gains control over you. The GM takes three hold. Excellent. What fun we will have. <laughs> I mean, before I lose all control of self, um, <laughs> does it look like Dylan? It has Dylan's walk. It has Dylan's talk. But there's something about his legs and his arms that suggests this is not Dylan at all. Dylan? It's Dom. And then it Kane, runs towards you. You asked. Dylan? With incredible speed, those eyes and smiling face creep up ever closer to you. And then all is dark, as it should be. Sophia, Molly, Rendis, you get back to the hostel. There is one light on, and it seems to be coming from the room Dom was in. Yeah, we've run in. We run up, run in. Yeah, this stuff's just rushing. There. Hmm? Sophia kicks off her shoe as progressing through the building. Nearly trips, I think, at the bottom of the stairs because it's dark, as described before on these stairs, and is kind of crawling like some creature up them as Trainer is being kicked off her last foot. Yeah, it's probably a very awkward bouncing on one foot to get the shoes off as well, just remembering to be respectful. And then just... <laughs> um, yeah, up straight up the stairs to get to this light source. He, he wouldn't just leave. He wouldn't just leave. Domno, where are you, you prick? Silence. You see one of the cameras on the first floor move slightly to your position. That little red dot indicating that it's recording. Oh, God. So when we go to his room, do we see anything in there? The candles, his bag? You see the, the candles. Urn. Uh, that looks burnt out. The urn is placed in the center, and just beyond the window, you see Dom staring into the forest outside. He's God down in the forest. Come on. Did, uh, he did his ritual again. Damn it. And she grabs, quickly quickly goes in, into her bags and grabs camera and then uh, her good camera and follows out. You so guys Sophia race empties out. empties what's left of her glass of water in the candle. 
Fire hazard. <laughs> and collects Dylan. Because apparently he's now back in her good books temporarily and being dragged on this adventure. Yeah, Dylan has only been wonderful, kind, and beautiful to everyone here. Definitely. As you guys There's no head, <laughs> you away you get down the, the stairs. end of this session. <laughs> <laughs> and, and move across, and you know that Dom has one of his hands. It looks like he's doing something with his mouth. Um, I guess just a quick out-of-character question. Uh, being Dom's roommate, would Rindus know any, like, safety net stuff to get Dom back if ever this happened? It's kind of like dealing with someone who's had a night terror. It's really about ensuring that they don't hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. um, she... When you dip your toe into the water, you kind of lose that toe for a brief period of time. And the best you can do is hold on to that other part. Rindis will very carefully uh, pass the camera to Molly, uh, making sure that it's on first, and be like, make sure you get some footage, uh, but I'm gonna go make sure he's okay. And just very slowly start walking towards him. Dom! Dom, it's Rindis. You... You were doing another ritual without telling anyone. We're just making sure you're okay. And she'll slowly, but close the gap to reach him. Dom, this is when you return. Your head is pounding with pain, and you feel the sharpest pain just kind of back here with the molar. Your hand is in your mouth. You can feel the finger of it kind of pushing something into that empty space, a little bit of blood coming out of your mouth, and your hand is red all over. You hear Rindis behind you. Dom. Dom, hey! And just hand on the shoulder to turn him. What are you doing? You notice right before him there is a tooth kind of coated in blood a molar recently it looks like taken out she's dumb and she'll You okay? Uh, you, you were pulling your tooth out. You feel a tooth kind of lodged into this part right here as your tongue goes over it. Oh. You were doing another, doing another ritual. Why didn't you say something? That, that that was what the safety net was for. If you you jumped in too quickly, someone had to be there to pull you out. It's fine. It's not fine. You sent Molly a message saying you were leaving. No, I didn't. What do you? trying to do here you didn't answer my text and you sent her one saying you were leaving 
Why would you do that? Why would you do any of this right now? Is this hostile? It's evil. I didn't send you a message. Making us all crazy. Show him, show him your phone. Show him the bullshit he's sending us. Looking at the phone is just a video message of yourself, Molly. It's almost as if you recorded yourself just staring at the phone. I didn't... I heard Dylan. You both saw that before, right? He's here. We did. That's why we're all here. No, I heard him. What do you mean you heard him? Did you eat the ice cream? Did you see the DVD again? Is that how you talked to him? You you got a hold of him? Yeah. What do you mean? What did he say? What did he say? Do you want to come see him? He's in the woods. No, you're acting really strange. Dom, I know that you can reach out to things like this, but this was a bit much. (laughs) Don't you miss him? Don't you want to talk to him? I... And just, of course I do. We all do. I'd give anything for him to be back. But he, he's gone. He can't come back. They, they never come back. Even you, you of all people should know that. Did, did you hear what he said, Rindy? He's not gone. He's just in the next room. He's right there. We can see him whenever we want. And I have. He'd like to see you too. Come on. Let's go see Dylan. And she'll look back to Molly and Sophie, very torn, because she she knows that Dom is fully capable of doing this, and and seeing Dylan, she's she's seen him do stuff like this before, but there's that moment of uncertainty, and she looks back to the two of them. Muted, Molly. No, 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 Rindus, you can't. Don't. Tonight's been too weird. Okay. Dom, not tonight. Not tonight. We... So much has been happening tonight, and I don't... What if this... What if this wasn't Dylan? This could have been anything. What are you talking about? Of course it's not Dylan! And of course Sophie it has no idea what the fuck is going on here, and she's getting more and more frustrated and angry. And Colin, been... if you're okay with this, if not, we'll wreck on it. Sophie okay. is gonna turn around and just open palm, slap you, because she doesn't know what else to do. She is freaking out. You are talking utter crap, having been the one to find her earlier, and she just slap. If that's okay with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. And Dom kind of Why are you doing this to us? He's here. He never left. No, 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 no. He's here! See? In this thing! And she's gonna unscrew the leather and it's a nice little twisty top so there's that metal scraping sound. 
And she opens it and a tiny bit of dust comes out and she tries not to inhale. See, he is in here. Because he died and he's dead and it is over. And I don't know why we agreed to this trip. Lid slammed back on, starts screwing it, but it gets kind of janked up. So it's only like half screwed on and it's stuck. Yeah. And there's this resounding pain in that same molar area, Don. Uh, can't help but lick it. Uh, that sweet tasting copper feel of that new wonderful tooth. You'll see. Ah, you'll see. You'll see. Da, I, you'll I believe understand. you saw something. I, I believe you saw something. I just don't believe it's still in. It doesn't make sense with anything else we've seen tonight. Of course it was Dylan. Of course it was fucking Dylan. How dare you? How dare you say it's not Dylan? It was Dylan. I saw him. He talked to me. He spoke directly to it. I told him I missed him. He said he missed me. And he said I could find him out in the forest. And I went to the forest and I found him. Don't you fucking tell me that Dylan isn't here. But, Dom, are you listening to us? So many strange things have been happening since we got here. We've all seen something terrible. Nothing bad happened to you? You just saw Dylan and it was great? Nothing strange happened. You don't think What's it's odd with that the tooth, Rindy, it's gone. Blood on your face, I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to help him breach it too. We've to bring to get him back. He has to reach this conclusion on his own. What you hear? What they're saying, right? The blood, the tooth, all of these strange things we've seen today, none of it makes sense. None of it sounds benevolent. You of all people should know to look out for malefic entities. And it's at that point that the light, kind of the side of the hostel, kind of shines bright onto your location. And you hear that familiar sound again, Dom, the... Time is on my side. Yes, it is. You notice that the lights of the hostel are turning on from the top, and then the bottom, and then the porch. The sliding door opens, and you see a hand as someone comes forth. And that's where we'll end it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to quickly send us oh. to the cult trailer real quick, and then we will be back to do outros. Stay tuned, friends. We're back, and that was Cult Divinity Lost, and we have been your cast for tonight. Thank you all for sticking with us. Remember, this has been a horror show, so look after yourselves, check in with your friends. 
What's something that fills the heart with joy to replace the dread, the teeth, the dead rabbits, and everything else that happened here tonight let's go around i would like to hear your favorite part of tonight's show something you dread for next week and where we can find you on the internet and i would like to begin with colinomicon hi colin how you doing a little possessed how about you eh. i drink bleach. Yeah, normal level <laughs> i drink yeah. bleach so yeah. it's wednesday right um, typical wednesday yeah, standard Wednesday. Yo! Oh, God. Um, mm. Whew. Uh, I only feel bad that I had to get up and stretch for a bit, and I missed a lot of you guys. Uh, I missed a bunch of you guys uh, buying ramen or whatever. It was horrible. Something about ice cream. I heard. Yeah, there was something <laughs> no, about ice cream. I really missed that. <laughs> Never it was buy awful. Ice cream Never watch the VOD. Never buy the yellow ice oh. cream. <laughs> I thought that would go without saying, but yeah, Jesus. Um. That was wild. Uh, holy shit. So, hi, friends, family. Um, I'm your friend Colin, Colin Amicon. Uh, my favorite part of this evening was, I mean, it's selfish, but getting possessed was pretty dope. I was here for it. I, mean, I was, uh, the first time I rolled on that involuntary medium and rolled a 15, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Come on. I know, me, right? Like, it. every cult's a game where I hate rolling high. I'm like, nah, just... Me. Yeah, I want the bad shit to happen. Yeah, I was just yeah. I was like, come on, take me over. And yeah, and I was like, okay, I guess I'll just role play. Ooh, a tingle. That was no fun. Come on. <laughs> Fuck me up. Um, so yeah, getting possessed, and not just a little possessed, holy crap possessed, um, at the end was very, very fun. Um, the one thing I didn't get to do, and I was right about to, but I'm just going to do it for posterity, was that just as the song came back in again, I had a preloaded right at the back of my throat, ready to do it. <laughs> Clip that. Creepy ass laugh. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go to sleep to that. That's never awesome. got, never got to do the creepy laugh. Um, but yeah, getting possessed was great. Uh, getting to be a freaking maniac for a little bit. That was fun. Um, really loving everything about this already this is so good y'all oh my god uh mitch you know how to bring the pain my friend oh yeah that that bleach mm. <laughs> good lordy that was rough but in the best way um anyway uh plugs let's see uh here obviously wednesday nights colt happy to be with all of you friday at nine Wild and chaotic, baby. Uh, here on Encounter Roleplay, uh, where I'll be playing, uh, and no matter what anyone tells you, I'm the captain. So I'll be playing the captain <laughs> of the ship, the Wild, Captain Kit Calloway, along with a crew of my favorite people. I'm the captain. Don't let them tell you otherwise. Um, and then Monday night, starting next Monday, over on Kobold Press uh, Twitch channel, doing the Deep Magic campaign, uh, where I'll be playing a Shadow Fae named Edwin Kumara. Uh, and man, I mean, come because I'm doing it, come for me, but stay for the costume, because I went insane on the costume for this character, and it's just, it's worth your time just to see the embroidery. So please... Come check us out over on uh, over on Cobalt Press, and uh, that's all for me right now. Um, Mitch, I cannot tell you how much I'm looking forward to next week and how happy I am to be in this game and to be with all of you. It's gonna be awesome. Beautiful work, <laughs> beautiful work all around. I appreciate that you awesome. put Edge in the name. Thank you, Colin. Is am that... I right? Edge win, no less. Edge win. No. Uh, I'm going to do my favorite bit and the thing I'm dreading for next week because I always forget myself when I do this part of the outros. The thing I would like to say is my favorite part of this week was shouting Shank Molly Shank in our green room chat as the creepy <laughs> ice cream twins were approaching and Cadence not doing the shank. I, I live in hope that Cadence slash Molly will bring the shankening at some point because these horrors, man. 
I have had these creepy dudes, right? Everyone's been through this experience. I was in New York going down an escalator. This dude comes up, grabs my hand, is proposing to me. My arm is going up the escalator. I'm still going down. Uh, that was my, my little flashback moment. Uh, yes, we've all had the great creeps. And uh, I'm glad that I can safely experience them here with all of you on a Wednesday next week. Things I'm dreading. Um, Sophia is out of her depth, and I don't think she was ready to be out of her depth this early into the trip. I dread only what happens when we leave the city because I'm sure it will only get worse. Uh, yeah. I did forget to say what I dread, and it's easy. It's just everything. Oh, I just yeah. everything. Just yeah, everything. Yeah. That's, that's like fair. living. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah. Whew. All right. So that is me. Uh, Cadence. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, trial <laughs> by fire, blood, and bleach. <laughs> Welcome. It was a ride. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for. Letting me be part of this chaotic wonder of horror. It's, it's true. Mitch, you freak me out and I love every second of it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hey. <laughs> My favorite part has got to be those creepy ice cream guys. Those are so <laughs> creepy and the sweat and the... After this, so I'm going to go to ice cream. and have my own ice cream just to wash the yellow ice cream out of me. I don't know. It's it's uh, what I dread. Whatever's in Mitch's mind, it's dark and scary in there. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. fun. <laughs> and I have nothing to plug other than I'm job hunting, so hey. Me a job no and you can find me on twitter at magdalene bloom what line of wacky win let's get let's get the wonderful cadence of job all right advertiser i just got my master's degree in december hey, hey. for library information science with an archives concentration archival work i want to work in i want our old things i want to make them all as molly would organized Yes. <laughs> so if so you are looking for this woman higher. Yes. <laughs> Archival expert, we, we got you covered. I don't care. Anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Just there send them this reel. Yeah, yeah exactly. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate that Molly was losing her shit, but was still more in control than any of the other three who were wildly orbiting in various spheres. And by wildly orbiting, Rindus seems very okay with everything in the strangest of ways. But welcome it's, with it's Rindus. It's the seeker. <laughs> it's the seeker. She she is just drawn to the, the, the chaos and it's fine, yeah. Um, hi, I'm Rindus, playing Rindus. It doesn't get confusing for anyone, I promise. Um, my yeah. favorite thing, <laughs> Hasn't yet. My favorite thing in this session was definitely having the creepy ice cream twin confront Rindus for throwing out the ice cream. Because, one, it implies that, holy shit, this guy is super fast, too, to have gotten past all three of us without being noticed. And then for him to just eat the ice cream in front of her, too. Uh, it, Mitch is a master of suspense and horror. It was perfectly creepy. Um, the thing I'm not looking forward to dreading for next week is the realization of the teeth because, yeah, that first tooth was was bad and Rindus is already connecting that there is something bad going on with the teeth and the, the twins mentioned teeth and Dom is putting teeth in his mouth. I thought he ripped a tooth out and then it was he put one in and it's just... Well, didn't he rip his out and put the one that we got from Dom in? That's how I interpreted that moment. That's how I... Oh, okay. Okay, good. Yeah, he swapped, swapped a tooth out. Oh, God, is it the tooth that was in the urn? Oh, no. <laughs> or is it another Ugh. tooth? Ooh, stay tuned. Normal dentist work, I promise you. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all horrible. Um, how method plugs, I am, Sam. I actually spit on my floor to do that. 
I was gonna say I was gonna say you weren't so method that you took your own tooth out, right? Okay. No, but I did spit <laughs> on the floor a couple times. <laughs> mm. Um, plugs are plugs are nice and easy. You can find me anywhere at Party Wipe Games. Uh, we do our own tabletop RPG streams uh, most days of the week. Uh, generally, Wednesday is the only day currently, but we're not doing something on our channel. We generally run 8.30 uh, Eastern Time for three hours, so you can catch us over there anytime. Uh, tomorrow, we will be starting our first session of uh, Scum and Villainy campaign, uh, where we're bounty hunters, uh, and I will be playing a delightfully serious, and definitely not a joke character, but a muscle man with a tiny cat head. Um, but I am the group's muscle, so I will be playing a totally different character than what I'm doing now. Uh, it's just a it's just a buff muscle man with a cat head, um, uh, also with a gun that he calls Mondays. Uh, but that's fine. Um, yeah, you can catch me anywhere. Party wipe games. Uh, thank you to everybody uh, who came from my links to come hang out. Uh, so that's great. That's me. That's all. Thank you. So I, I really much. like and... the tiny. Cat head thing. Go ahead. Oh, I can uh, show yeah. you guys the picture later too. <laughs> I'm gonna include the tiny cat head somewhere in this campaign. I think that's 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 okay. Uh, yeah, my name is Mitchell. Uh, you can find me uh, now that I have officially claimed the penny for a tail tag uh, uh, on uh, Twitter. Thanks to uh, Colin uh, for that. Uh, yeah, you can find me there in my musings. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook. Uh, Penny for a Tale is where I am normally at, uh, representing different companies uh, for advertisement and marketing. Uh, I am, of course, a marketing director over at Helm Gas. Uh, so Troubleshooters, Cult Divinity Lost. We just got done uh, with our Kickstarter, which is amazing, which even has a forbidden book that we can't release in stores so the only way to get it is via the kickstarter that's how tough the material uh is uh so if you're into stuff like that definitely check it out um other than that uh you can find some of my writings on drive through rpg including my kind of mini horror uh campaign -ish scenario for shadows over soul uh titled into the flames um and yeah, uh, definitely expect a, a lot of awesome things uh, coming up uh, that I will be a part of. So uh, stay tuned and dear gosh, that was awesome. I love Charlie's faces. I think I live for it. Uh, Colin, of course, creepy as heck. Uh, Ma, uh, Magdalene, some. it's just amazing. I, I, I love having you here. You, you bring a lot of depth and, and such to it. I love it. Uh, and of course, Rendis. I cannot wait for you to uh, kind of follow the the ice cream and the babies and see where they lead and take you. Um, this is, of course, episode one, so we have a lot more to go through. Uh, how many episodes we have out of, out of what? We got seven more? Okay. Yeah, so seven more of these wonderful filled uh, things where it just progressively gets worse and worse. Um, I assure you, uh, but yeah, thank you for everyone uh, who showed up. I just realized that you said it gets progressively worse, and I thought we were already yeah. at the... Oh. No, this is... <laughs> oh. First session is, is kind of like, it's the... If you're at a roller Was this coaster... this you being gentle? Place, yeah, it's a, <laughs> the, it's a baby roller coaster, right? You You get in... It sends you like a couple of meters up and down, but you're not really doing anything. And you see the roller coaster further along that you're like, oh gosh, that touches the sky. Like, I want to ride that. And that that's where we're going to. Well, so this we was a are nice going introduction. To the sky in the next seven Soft. episodes. If you've made it this far and you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment down below with the most interesting thing you've ever eaten while traveling. I would very much <laughs> like to hear about that. And uh, give us a, a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. If you're here in chat, I would like to make it a tradition at the end of this show, someone offers a horrible thing that's happened to them in real life that's not too traumatic to share. But, you know, Creep On and Escalator was my story for tonight. Uh, I would like to say a massive thank you to everyone to watch uh, that watched today and is watching on YouTube, etc. I would like to say thank you to Mitch for being our horrific storyteller today. And thank you to Helmgast for sponsoring this show and letting us take this ride together 
into the darkness. I do not have a sign off this season and it throws me every time. If you have a suggestion, come and hit us up on the Discord or via Twitter. I want to know what you think I should say when it's time to say goodbye. But for tonight, I'm going to say don't drink bleach. Don't do self-dentistry. If something dead is on the floor, seriously clean that thing up. Don't eat yellow ice cream. If someone creeps you out, walk away. Find a friend. Don't engage. Look after yourself. <laughs> your we guy. love you. And we will see I you think, tomorrow. I think, it, okay. I think the phrase should definitely be don't eat the yellow ice cream. Just the don't sign out. Don't eat the yellow ice cream. All right. Don't eat the yellow so, ice cream. Come back tomorrow because at 6 o'clock Eastern time, we will be having the Sword of Kalis, our new Star Trek adventure. And until then... Don't eat the yellow ice cream. Good night, friends. I will be the last to fall. I won't shed a tear for them to see. to fall.